Hello, welcome to another cooking rodeo with the potato cowgirls and uh, we have another item for our Thanksgiving Shangri-La playlist. Um, you know when you get guests on Thanksgiving they usually come up a day early, visit a day early or they come like at 11 or so and you want to have something to feed them because your turkey dinner is probably later or your vegan turkey dinner is later and um, you already have a butternut squash soup in the playlist but this is one I really like because we do the butternut squash different as a vegetable and um, this one is uh, I call it the impress the in-laws tomato soup <laughs> and of course we do it in the instant pot because we are lazy wood, wood. and uh, you can attend to your guests or other uh, meal items while the tomato soup is getting ready in the instant pot so before we can even start with the instant pot um, i had a, a pound of roma tomatoes roma the, these uh, like ovo tomatoes uh, ripe Oma to roma tomatoes are the best for that soup they have the, the ripest flavor the sweetest flavor I cut them in half on a parchment paper baking sheet with uh, chopped onions. I only chopped the, the top of a garlic clove. It fell apart, but you know, it doesn't matter. So leave the, leave the, the, the skin on and roast it with it. Later we, we just squeeze the mushy stuff out of the garlic. The, let's say, like I said, one white onion and a few sprigs of thyme. Thyme is what makes a tomato soup rock and uh, these roasted tomatoes in the tomato soup will be fantastic uh, for me tomatoes are summer ripe tomatoes so this is my last farewell to summer <laughs> for our Thanksgiving and uh, I put it in at 400 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes and then we will get the, the soup going okay see you then Hi. Hello, we are back. So our tomatoes have are roasted. I show you the. I just took it out of the oven. Turn it off. Let's see. Wanted to show you how it looks like. So my goal was not to caramelize them, just to roast them a little bit, and the onion and the um, garlic with a little balsamico, salt and pepper, and thyme sprigs. That's all that's in there. So make sure you put the time script to spr sprigs out. Um, we will add the time later because we don't want the, the little branches in the in this soup. And now we are on the other side of the kitchen because we are using the Insta Pot. And I put you down because you want to see what I'm doing. All right, that's a good. Good few, my Insta part. So we are assembling. This is one chopped red pepper. Just put it in. This is a can, 28 ounce of uh, crushed tomatoes, the Cento, the Italian. Put that in. And uh, let's see, I have uh, two cups of uh, vegetable broth. I put a little bit in that can to, to uh, get all the tomato out. I don't want to waste anything. Okay, so vegetable broth, two cups. Might need a little bit water, we'll see later. Okay, then uh, we put in a tablespoon dried basil okay. and we have a quarter Quarter teaspoon ginger. Let's put the lid on. Um, paprika. 
the next that comes in. A teaspoon. A teaspoon of paprika. I also put in some red chili pepper for the heat. Um, let's say a quarter teaspoon. They're hot, so it's up to taste, you know, how much you put in. With the salt, again, we as always, we are uh, very careful. We can always salt later. So a quarter teaspoon is enough because we all... Oh, ew, great, Sylvia. Just poured it over my cutting board. <laughs> quarter teaspoon. Um, I'd rather put in one later, you know, than too much. A quarter teaspoon turmeric. My German watches, this is curcuma. Yeah. Okay. Then we have the, the herb that's really, really important with tomato soup is thyme. So thyme really goes well with tomato soup. So we put in half a teaspoon dry thyme. And then we use the little sprigs. We roast it. And you know how to put thyme from a sprig. You go against the grain. And that's roasted. It goes really, <laughs> really easy. The leaves are dry. all in okay. that's enough <clears throat> the other ingredient I think for tomato is black pepper so I do a good amount. I would say a quarter teaspoon. Don't be stingy with the black pepper. Uh, we did the chili pepper, we did the turmeric, we did the paprika. We do a quarter teaspoon of oregano. some basil here which I also add. I don't have fresh basil. Uh, I will put some fresh parsley on top of our soup as garnish. So just put one of that basil in. Then a squeeze of lemon juice and uh, let's put that away here. We get our tomatoes. Again with the shell, <laughs> I show you what I do with it. You're almost there. Super duper tomato soup. You will earn plus points with your in-laws if you feed them that soup. <clears throat> my garlic here so I roasted it with the shell so what we do is we just peel the shell off Wow, it smells boy I mean I live in Gilroy Gilroy garlic central and we just uh, if you can mush it it's pretty hot still, so I just cut it a little and then mush it with a bigger knife you can mush it Oh, it's, white. it's nice and soft. Nice and soft. Just like I want it. I just want to get that crown off here. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Like butter. Okay. And I take my bigger knife. And 
I just mush it here. See? So it's so soft and nice and roast. Ah, oh, it's a good smell. Goody goody! Let me put that in. liquid. Now the roasted onions. Top care for a, a riper flavor. When you roast all that it's all sweet and ripe like you want in a tomato soup. It's not as uh, acidic, you know. If you wonder, is it what? No coconut milk or anything? Uh, never do milk in the instant pot in the beginning. We put a cuckoo. We put a can of coconut milk in the soup when the soup is done. You, otherwise, you ruin your instant pot. It's foaming and it will clog your um, vent and it will not create the correct pressure. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> okay, now we stir it a little. You could do, to your liking, you could do a little correctly. You know what? I might, I might do this. Get a carrot in. I have a few small carrots that need to go. Why not? No. Let's do that. got everything we put the time in yeah I think we got everything in there yeah okay now the lid let's see how we do with liquid looks enough to me um, let's do a little bit more I had two cups so do in there. Yeah, that looks good. I think that looks good. Okay, now we put the lid on. We put the lid on. See how good I got in putting the lid on? When you look at the earlier movies I did, I never got the damn lid on. <laughs> okay. And uh, we go to manual. It's so dark in here. And we go on seven minutes. And that's all you have to do. <coughs> When I come back, see, Instapot is on. When I come back, hello, okay, we are back. Our soup should be done. Uh, I will open the Instapot in a second. Show you. Here's the Instapot. It's on, on, I let it on natural release, seven minutes natural release. Oops. Okay. Looking good in here. Let's try before we move on. Let me try. Mmm. Very good. Put a little bit more pepper in. Then, um, and that's something I learned. We put the, I put co uh, coconut milk in I have I'm at 99 pound weight loss so I can afford doing that if you do not want to use coconut milk because it's not a McDougal recommended item it's too fat 
I have the, the light coconut milk here. Uh, you can do almond milk, you can do soy milk, any plant milk you want. But please put them in at the end, when you open the lid, not at the beginning when you cook the soup. It will clog your uh, vent and will uh, make your pressure cooker not coming to pressure. So do not uh, do milk in the beginning. Let me put that in. Oh, that looks good. And I will put also in a little bit of nutritional yeast um, to thicken it up a little. I really want it creamy and the, the B12 is good in nutritional yeast. So if you have an immersion blender, this is the moment to use it. Everything nice and creamy. Together. If you don't have an immersion blender, oops, that one just fell apart. Great. <laughs> okay. If you don't have an immersion blender, uh, use the food processor or I think even the potato masher would work, you know. I'm, I'm not a technical genius. <laughs> okay, don't use it that often, but I think it looks pretty creamy to me. Looks pretty creamy to me. Let's see. It's a test drive. Oh yeah. You could also put uh, potatoes in, by the way, if you want to. Mm. Oh, it's good. Mm, it's good. Uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. and put that out. Okay, put a little one in. The soup. I'm sure I want to show you what you can do with garnishing. So you put your soup in. That is nice and creamy. Look at this soup. Nice and creamy. Perfect ripe tomato flavor. I'm not putting in leeks and stuff and I, I personally want the, the red the tomato flavor in there. So this is why I don't fill in potatoes. I want my tomatoes so to taste the, the ripe Roma tomatoes. Now what you can do is um, cheese sandwich of course you can do a, um, a um, let me get you up again. Okay you can do a cheese sandwich with the tomato a cheese sandwich with the tomato soup. Um, uh, Put some basil leaves in there. I have uh, here some parsley, and I have. I made this uh, afternoon also. Uh, Anne and Jane Esselstyn's kicking um, uh, cornbread muffins. <laughs> I will give you that recipe in another day, not today. But uh, I put a little bit of my own twist on, but it's really good. Not dry, not at all. So you can crumble. See how nice the corn muffins look? You can crumble a little in there. You can put croutons in there. Anything works, you know. Or pine kernels are good. So this is a nice soup to impress your in-laws. I hope you, hope you like the cooking show and I see you next Sunday and we might have the cornbread then, okay? <laughs> For our Thanksgiving Shangri-La. All right, like you say in California, peace out, pow.